meeting up with some of these people and meeting some of these groups and understanding um, how they were doing things was so, so helpful. That, that summer, 2016, was the first time I attended Sunstone. Um, I felt kind of naughty walking in the doors. I felt like I was doing something wrong. These were those like intellectuals that got themselves in trouble. And like, that's the, the idea I had of Sunstone growing up, you know, they were kind of suspect. Um, but I just remember that first Sunstone, like I was there from sunup to sundown every single day, taking in every single class, you know, and just, it, it honestly awakened something in me to say, there are spaces where we can be honest. There are spaces where we can just let it all out. I can actually voice what is actually going on with me and people are not going to shut me down. They are actually going to want to have a conversation about that. Met two amazing women there in one of the classes and who remain friends of mine to this day. Um, the second day, one of them brought me Falling Upward um, by Richard Rohr. And I remember when she handed me this book, she's like, you need this book. And I remember thinking to myself, this is that guy I saw on Oprah last year. And I remember watching that first interview with Richard Rohr where I thought, oh, this guy's nice. He's great, whatever. And then the last 10 minutes of this interview he did with her, I was like jaw on the floor because he was speaking so directly to my experience. And the thing, so the thing I loved about him, one of the things he said, I remember him saying is religion is the best thing in the world and religion is the worst thing in the world. And I remember Oprah had a, a, a reaction to that, like, you're out of the cloth. You're not supposed to be saying this. And he was like, well, it's true. You know, there's a lot that's wrong with it. And it, there was just something so refreshing to me about hearing someone say that who was part of religion. And hearing him say, look, our egos get involved in religion. Our egos get involved. One of the things I remember him saying is our egos want us to be separate and superior. This is part of its function. What a perfect place to have that thrive is in religion. It gives you the perfect opportunity to feel separate and superior. Imagine why that resonated with me <laughs> with Mormonism. I'm like, oh my gosh, you tell people that this is the truth, you have it? Of course that is an ego. Like, that's good for our egos. That feels really, really good, right? Um, and then he, he, I remember him saying this phrase, who knew religion is the perfect place to hide from God? Like, what is that? To do that from our egos, it is the perfect place to hide from God. And I just remember, like, I kept that, that interview on my DVR for a year. <laughs> and I'd go back and just listen to that and take that in. And, then, and the other thing he said that really, really resonated, he said, if you start to notice the problems and the evils in religion— and you fight against it too directly and too hard for too long, you become the mirror image of what you hate. And I had started to see some of that in myself, of the judgment that I was holding against those judgy people. I mean, the irony, right? Um, I started to notice how I was holding, now I was feeling separate and superior from those Mormons who aren't getting it the way I'm getting it. I started to notice those things in myself. And then the last thing he said is, if you want to get through this, your best bet is to see everything through a lens of love. So from that time forward, when I had things happen, like I, I did go to my Relief Society president at one point and asked for new um, visiting teachers because I had, they had just moved me away from someone that I felt could actually listen to me. So I said, can you actually put that back? Can you undo that? Because I'm having these questions. Well, immediately, one of her counselors brings me a Book of Mormon and puts it in my mailbox with these quotes from Spencer Kimball about when my faith is low, I need to read the Book of Mormon, you know, all of these things. And I remember at the time, my initial reaction being, I feel so misunderstood. They think that that's what I need is to read the Book of Mormon. They don't understand that every time I open the Book of Mormon, it throws me further into my faith crisis. They don't understand this being like really 
snippy about it in my heart. And then I stopped and thought, lens of love, lens of love, lens of love. <laughs> like this is a woman who cares deeply about me. She took the time to handwrite this huge thing for me and bring me this, like what an act of service from that woman. And all I can think about is how she doesn't get me that that's really self-serving. So it helped me turn around things like that in my mind to see it differently. So I remember I, I was, I still wanted to connect to people. I still wanted to be instructive. So even with her, I went up to her and said, you know, um, I so appreciate what you did and bring me that book of Mormon. And that's a hard message for me. I took some things from that that weren't easy and you could tell she wasn't ready for the conversation. So I shut it down really quick and just said, you know what? I appreciate it. Thank you. And walked away. So I still wanted those learning opportunities. I wanted to be understood, but I started getting to know when people were not ready to have that conversation with me. It wasn't going to go anywhere. So, so, so after Sunstone, I, um, I started looking more into Richard Rohr. I got this book. I started reading the book. And I looked up his website and I saw this program that he has. And being me, I never saw a, a retreat or, a, you know, a workshop or an experience or something that I didn't, didn't want to try to sign up for. Here's this two-year living school program. Had no idea what it was, but I knew that, that, that Richard Rohr's message really resonated with me. So I'm like, I want to go. I need to go learn from this guy. I need to figure out what this is. And so I applied and put in my application that summer for the living school. Um, and it's a deal where you, they take interview or they take all of their applications once a year. And then, um, you find out six months later, whether you were accepted into the program and it starts a year later. And during that time, I, I went to my first Mormon matters retreat with Natasha, um, and Dan Weatherspoon. And, um, what was that about? What was that? Tell our listeners what those what are. What those what are. Were, yeah. Such a great thing. So it was, I think it was the very first uh, Mormon Matters retreat they had done. Um, and I know it's patterned off after the ones that you and Natasha had been doing. Um, that it's, it's basically a retreat for people who are questioning and um, they're wonderful. They, it, it was, it was, it was a life changing weekend for me. Um just very cathartic. So we learn, um, learn a lot about what conversion is, what deconversion is, what vulnerability is, what uh, learn about relationships, learn about why this is hard to move through this. And it's with a small group of like 20 people. It's enough to like, it was enough to bond us together, hear each other's stories, recognize we're not the only ones going through this. Um, and then learning different things about framing faith differently. And, um, and uh, Marty Erickson was part of that, uh, that retreat as well. Just really, and you know, these are three amazing people. And um, I just, it, 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 it was so healing to be able to find all of these spaces all at once where I could be myself. I could be myself. I could be understood. I could actually say what was on my heart. And I no longer felt like I was alone. I never felt like, no longer felt like I was crazy. And I started forging friendships that had a depth that matched, I think what my soul had always wanted, but never knew how to get to with anybody else. Um, before that, you know, in my relationships in the church, 